Hi, everybody. Welcome to Exploring Sunday Scriptures. Glad to be joining you again, and now we will begin our summer series in earnest. So these are scriptures that have been submitted by all of you, whether they are scriptures that are beloved, that you take comfort in, or they are scriptures, honestly, that have confused you, and so you're hopeful for a little uh, clarification on, on the importance or value of the place of these particular passages, parables, stories, moments in history uh, that are part of the biblical narrative. Trying to look for some sort of arrangement of this series, I decided that the best way to approach this is somewhat what I have done in the past, which is in canonical order. In other words, simply taking the scriptures I've received and uh, taking them on in the order of the books or chapter and verse of the Bible from which they have been uplifted. Out of all the scriptures that have been submitted, there is only one actually from the Old Testament part of the Bible, and it is a psalm. And it's a particular verse of a psalm, and I'm going to use the whole psalm as part of worship. But the verse that I will begin with here is the final verse of Psalm 27, which reads as follows. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Now let me read the rest of the psalm, and then I'm going to share with you some reflections on this psalm and the psalmist and what's going on or what we can find within this or some of the revelations I've had or insights I've had as I've begun to explore this passage of Scripture uh, in creating the order of worship for this Sunday and starting the process towards crafting also a message of proclamation on Psalm 27. So here's Psalm 27, all 14 verses of it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up, above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence." I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Scholars have posited that there are actually four parts to this psalm. Two parts that are in celebration of God's presence, and that's the very beginning of the psalm and the very end of the psalm, and two parts which comprise prayers, if you will, will, or supplications, invocations to God which really begin around maybe verse 6, 5 or 6 there. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies, or maybe even verse 7, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. A transition away from thanksgiving into supplication. Well, what can we find in this, or what is uh, here to be known? There are two potential readings that I see in this. One is very literal in the sense of, um, the challenge of, that was going on. If we place this at the time of David, then it's very easy to see adversaries and wars and battles that enraged. And so this being very true to prayers related to victory on the battlefield. So one reading is to read it at face value, at that kind of level. Another reading, however, 
moves away from grant us victory on the battlefield into something more deep, which is grant us the victory no matter what the outcome to truly be uh, the victors um, in our relationship with you through our faith. And that, I think, that reading is more honest and uh, more deep to the psalm. So we begin the psalm, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Light and salvation really are synonyms in how they are used here. The sense of God as the source, God as the guiding uh, reality. Um, And from that, we have the psalmist say, whom shall I be afraid? It's a way of saying, no matter what circumstances I face, I really don't have any reason to be afraid because I have this connection, this relationship with God. And because of that, even if my life itself, my physical life comes to a conclusion, I have nothing to fear because I have this connection with God. And it goes on, when evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. In in my mind, again, this is not really speaking to a sense of God's sudden protection on the battlefield, but the sense that those realities cannot impact the depth of faith that lies within. When the depth of faith is there, no matter what adversaries we face, no matter what realities we face outside of ourselves, they cannot penetrate that wall. Then an, through, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. Again, this the strength of faith. Then we have one thing I asked, and I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all my days, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, and he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on his rock. I hear this as further affirmation of what faith provides, that in that day, even with life itself on the line and potentially one's own life lost, there is a reality of a long-lasting relationship or deep connection or permanent residence. This is Psalm 27. We go back to Psalm 23, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we have these repeated themes in the psalm that um, vacillate between the challenge that's there, but also also the resolver or the um, what faith provides in in the face of the challenges that are there, and that's ultimately this uh, this this resolution that with faith intact, there is nothing to fear at all, uh, for God will be with us always. And so we move from from that to, now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I'll offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. What I hear in this is, I will not be quiet about the faith that I have. So though my enemies would rather me be silent to cower in fear, my faith proclaims that there is a part that they cannot touch or damage. And that is something that it fills with such confidence and joy, there's an inability to conceal that. Um, and so it, it springs out of us. It, it sings out of us, if you will. Then we move into the, what I see as kind of the prayer time, the supplication time. Uh, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. So we go from a place of confidence to perhaps feeling like, okay, God, where are you? There's a book that that, uh, we used here uh, long ago now is part of a sermon series, and and I preached on it many times, how doubt and faith are two sides of a coin, and oftentimes our greatest moments of faith can follow great moments of faith doubt or feeling uh, very alone uh, and questioning, where is God in the midst of this? And so I see the same sort of activity going on within the psalm itself, that we move from a place of confidence into this sense of, but where are you? I need you now. The army is encircled around me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God. 
uh, though my family could give me up, my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. So we have a little bit of the restoration of the confidence there. And then we have sort of a, 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 a plea. Teach me, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me and they're breathing out violence. Now, again, the face reading of this is, okay, I'm facing this great challenge, so God be on my side. A different reading is, don't let my faith falter in the face of this challenge. So teach me your way, lead me on a level path. So don't, don't let me turn uh, in a different direction than your way, God, the way that I know is right. And so teach me or guide me might be another way to put it on that path. And then we have the final sort of restoration or, or confirmation of faith. I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So this in some ways to me reflects the Lord's prayer. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So though my life may be at its conclusion, though my work may not see that, I believe or I have the hope that I will. And so we pray in the Lord's Prayer, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord. And then we have that final sense of um, providing a, a, some some confidence in, in that hope in the midst of very challenging times of, of really what we're to be about. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Double repetitions in the psalm is a way of emphasizing, overemphasizing that point. And so we have really the most emphasized point in the entire psalm contained within that verse that was given for this summer sermon series, which is wait for the Lord. A sense of maintaining our faith in the face of incredible odds, which we may not come out of, but ultimately holding fast to the hope that God indeed, the goodness of the Lord, will come into the land of the living. In the meantime... We do the work that we do, and we wait in patience for that reality to dawn more fully. That light, we go back to the beginning, the Lord is my light and salvation. That light to really illuminate everything. So wait for the Lord. It's a very difficult thing for us because we like instant gratification and we want change yesterday. Although when change happens, we tend to be rather reluctant and resistant to change as it comes. So, very challenging scripture in some ways that in the face of incredible odds, what, what are we called to do? To continue, you know, seeking out God's guidance in the midst of this, continuing to be led on that straight path, maintaining our hope and confidence that... Uh, the goodness of the Lord will come in the land of the living while we wait, while we wait. Very difficult thing. So short passage, and so therefore a short exploration of the scriptures for this Sunday. I do invite you to go back to Psalm 27, perhaps a few more times before Sunday morning, and look at it from a couple different translations. That sometimes can provide a, different interpretations on the same passage. Uh, you can find these on the web if you want to look them up. Bible Gateway, I think, is a great way to see different translations. Um, the message provides a very different interpretation to the New Revised Standard Version, and the New International NIV Version also can be a great way, which is close to the NRSV, but sometimes I think gets the poetry of the Psalms a little better. Uh, but I invite you to do that, and that may provide other insights as we begin this summer sermon series in earnest with the scriptures submitted by all of you. Great to be back with you for Exploring Sunday Scriptures, and I look forward to worshiping with you and exploring these scriptures that you've submitted throughout this summer. God bless. Take care.